I'm going to be real with you guys. And you all know it. If you're here, it's because you clicked on the clickbait title. But that was the only way that I thought that I could get the correct audience on this video. And I think it's very important. We're going to have a discussion today. I'm going to be uh, talking about something that I talked about with myself a few weeks ago when I was, you know, pondering why I do ham radio, why I use radio. I asked myself some tough questions and it made me kind of rethink my communication plan and what kind of radios I buy and the setup that I buy. And I wanted to share those thoughts with my audience because I think it's important that we uh, we sometimes question ourselves and ask ourselves the uh, important questions about our motives and what we want to do. So a few weeks ago, I was watching the Tech Prepper on YouTube. If you guys haven't seen his channel and if you're into uh, kind of prepping and ham radio stuff, go definitely check out his channel. He's got some good stuff. I was watching his videos and uh, he does a lot of survival um, prepping, right? Like, what can you do with ham radios or communication equipment in a disaster? And another thing I wanted uh, that kind of compounded to this was when I looked at my YouTube uh, statistics, uh, let's just say my channel is a little strange. A lot of you guys are ham radio operators, and a lot of you guys are preppers, and I didn't really um, anticipate so many preppers watching my channel. But here you are, and you're probably on this video. So this video is going to be aimed specifically at the preppers as well as the ham radio operators on my YouTube channel. I've got something valuable for each of you here. So let's talk about something. A few weeks ago, uh, along with watching the tech prepper there on YouTube, I was taking a look at some of my radio equipment. Right now it's kind of nice and neat, but before it was kind of just bound up in a bunch of wires and it was like jammed off on the shelf. And I got to thinking, I'm sure a lot of you uh, other amateur radio operators get this, but you're out in public and you start talking about radio things. People ask you, like, what are you going to do with that? Like, why do you have all that? And it's like, well, in case of an emergency, in case of a disaster. Um, or your friends may make comments like, oh, you're going to be the person I go to, you know, if I need uh, communication, if something happens. And if we take a minute to, to step back and think about it, if somebody turned out the lights right now, and I mean actually turned out the lights, like the lights go off, the electricity's down, there's no other communication, there's no other electricity, what are you going to do? And we always talk about the high-level concept of emergency communication. We throw out words like Arden, uh, backup power, we throw out words like um, redundancy, but do we actually have a plan to implement any of those? And have we actually thought about the thought process of what will happen if the lights go off like that as they would and how you're going to react to that so i'm going to ask you guys some of the questions i asked myself and i implore you to kind of think about it for a minute think about your communication plan and why you're into ham radio me personally i got into ham radio for the tinkering aspect when people ask me why i do ham radio i usually tell them it's prepping right because that's what kind of makes sense to most people um if i just tell them i just like to turn knobs They'll think there's something wrong with me mentally, right? But, and, and I started thinking like, well, prepping is a side effect of owning all this equipment. Like, if I have, you know, thousands of dollars or a thousand or several hundred dollars worth of amateur radio equipment and communication equipment, it should be able to be used in a disaster. It should be able to be used in an emergency. Otherwise, its only function is for me to play with. And that's not bad in and of itself, but it's just a shame. So I started looking at my pile of wires and stuff I had in the corner, and I, I thought to myself, if I actually had to use this in a disaster, I wouldn't know where to start. I could turn on the radios, and I could call CQ. I could, you know, I have, I have a little bit of battery power. I could maybe talk to somebody. I don't know. But I started thinking about um, being intentional, and that's the big word I want to talk about. Uh, in this video is being intentional on the radio, being intentional with your hobbies, being intentional with the radios that you buy and the setups that you use. So this is going to be, I'm going to start out first for the amateur radio folks that are on this video and then we'll, I'll target the preppers and uh, so that way I offend everybody. When I get on the amateur radio, whether that be FT8 or single sideband, most of the time, 99% of the time, my goal is to contact someone random, right? We call on CQ, any station. 
and we're not trying to contact anybody specific and that's the first point i want to bring up the way that we conduct ourselves on the radio if someone turned out the lights the first thing i ask myself is who would I need to communicate with and why? And already step one of amateur radio hasn't really, uh, in myself, the way I conduct myself over amateur radio hasn't prepared me to for who. Because I haven't thought about who who would I want to talk to? Who, who's going to help me in a natural disaster or, God forbid, uh, a, a, you know, a nuclear bomb, uh, the grid's down, we're being taken over by Russians, who knows? Any of the crazy stuff that could happen, who would I want to talk to? So the step one, we're going to need to ask yourself that. If you have this communication equipment, who are you going to talk to? Why do you want to talk to them? It's going to be, you know, a strange world if something does happen, depending on what happens, um, or in an emergency or natural disaster. Why do I want to talk to that person? What can they provide me or what can I provide them? So those are the first two. Who do you want to talk to and why do you want to talk to them? Next, you need to ask yourself, how are you going to talk to them? And that's going to depend on the distance that you are going to be away uh, and some other factors. And a lot of amateur radio operators, you know, we, we run some like a crazy, crazy protocols like FTA, JSA, WinLink, all these weird digital. Uh, some of them are more outdated and obscure these days like BBS. Sorry, if you guys are BBS fans, it's, it's there's not many people on it these days, right? I, I'm going to make some videos about that in the future, but... And this is in terms of like preparedness, right? Anyways, you have all these modes. All that's going to go out the window, right? If if there's a disaster or an emergency, you're not going to be trying to like configure your BBS to log into somebody's node, hoping that they're online and hoping that they have a mail server up or anything crazy like that. You just want to talk to somebody. So all that other stuff, I, I'm more than likely is going to go out the window. Here's another question: Are they going to know to be listening? If they do know to be listening. How do they know which frequency to listen in on? These are big questions that we have to ask ourselves. There's no other communication at this point. It just went offline. If you haven't communicated with that individual you're trying to talk to prior and have some type of plan in place, you're not going to be able to reach them. Uh, it's not like you're going to be able to open up Simplex or jump on an FRS radio. All that stuff's going to be crazy packed full of weirdos all over the street, right? Every other house down the road is going to be on their kids' walkie-talkie or something trying to listen in or do something right so you need to have a plan in place to be able to get to somebody that you need to talk to and that comes to another point how are you gonna power your radio to talk to that person right so even if you have a plan in place you can't just keep calling on the radio and hope they answer you're gonna have to stagger that right because if you keep calling you're gonna you're needlessly possibly transmitting and they're not even home to listen or they are, and they're wasting battery, which is a very valuable resource in a situation like this. So you might need to come up with a communication plan to say every minute on top of the hour, we're going to try to make that initial contact. And uh, the initial contact is one of the most important parts because it's the most difficult part. It's the most difficult, and if it isn't done, no other communication is going to happen. So I implore you amateur radio operators to think about in a, in a disaster, who are you going to talk to? Why are you going to talk to them? How are you going to talk to them? And what's your plan to get in touch on that initial contact? And that's something that we don't often train uh, as a whole as amateur radio operators. We, we train in the high level concepts and we throw out words like redundancy. We throw out words like Arden or emergency communication. But do we really have a plan down? Do you have a plan down? If the lights were to turn out now, would you be able to contact the person that you need to contact? And if you were not able to contact them, what do you do next? The amateur radio operators part out of the way. Now this section is for you preppers. So I uh, did a little experiment and I went on to a couple of pre uh, prepper communities and I asked them, what are you doing for your communication plan? How are you going to communicate and who are you going to communicate with? And the results of the answers were kind of lackluster, and they relied a lot on the bow thing I have in the closet, all the way up to FRS or GMRS. And uh, folks, I can say as a community, um, if you're a prepper, definitely go check out the tech prepper. He'll get you up to speed on all of the uh, the communication stuff. But I'm gonna preach right now. The, my first thing is you have to have a license. No, I don't mean legally have to have a license because obviously. 
with no other means of communication, you can use any of those other frequencies in, in life or death situations. That's what's, that was what a lot of the excuse on the Reddit is. But the reason you need a license is to practice. If you're any type of prepper worth his prep, you're going to be able, you're going to be practicing uh, your communication plan. You're going to be practicing your drills that you're going to do. You're going to be practicing your bug out situation where you're going to go. You're going to be practicing all that. And the communication section is just as important as the rest. And I would say even more so because there's more things that can go wrong with technology. You can work out people. You can, you can work out family. You can work out situations. But if you can't communicate with that other person, you can't make them do anything. You can't get them to help. You can't get them to adjust anything. You can't get them to turn on the radio. You're not going to be able to talk with them. So I think that's why it's important to practice your communication plan as a prepper. And where that comes in at is on the ham radio side, there actually is uh, several really good communities uh, built around emergency preparedness. And there's a lot of different events in amateur radio that center around being able to uh, get a little gear on the, on the air and use it properly. Uh, and with little power to conserve power, like QRP, you have soda, you have POTA. All these different events are things that are training people to take the to give them the ability to take their radio equipment, take it on the go, and still operate. And that's a um, that's a measure that's extremely important in a uh, emergency situation. So that's that's my first gripe with the preppers is you have to practice, and you can't practice without a without amateur radio license and even if there's some people out there that still say well we can invent call signs and stuff you don't do it i i keep my radios on 24 7. i go whenever i drive places i'm scanning frequencies i have never heard and i've only been a ham for four years or so but i've never heard preppers using fake call signs or whatever on the radio to practice prepping it, it basically breeds inexperience if you're serious about a communication plan, if you're serious about be getting in touch with somebody that you know, you'll get your amateur radio license, and they will as well. That way, you all can practice that communication plan uh, before, because after that, it's it's over. Like, if if the lights turn out and you haven't gotten your licenses and you haven't established communication and practiced your combo plan, you're not going to be able to communicate. And amateur radio provides so many outlets to uh, get ready for a situation like that. You just have to get involved in the right communities. So that's my big thing with the preppers. It, nobody's really going to take you seriously a, as a uh, communication person if you don't have an amateur radio license. The second thing that I heard when I asked people um, if they don't have their license was, you know, how do you how do you practice? And a lot of it was like I set my bow things to a specific frequency and give them to my friends. And it's lawful to use them when stuff hits the fan, right? That's not an answer because you, you never even practiced. You, know, you haven't keyed up and talked with your friend, right? Uh, you don't know where they're going to be. All of those questions that I asked initially for the amateur radio operators, those apply to preppers as well. But with the preppers, I, I, I have that additional, you need to get your amateur radio license. Another thing additionally that I have for the preppers out there is, Stop buying $30 radios and expecting them to be reliable in a, a catastrophic event. You see all those radios right there? There's like three Baofengs back there. I love Baofeng. I love my Baofengs. They're really neat little radios. I can beat them up or whatever. But when stuff hits the fan, those are going to like the minions. Those bow things are going to the people I don't care about as much. If I want to give radios away to people that might need them, those are the ones that are going because they're basically useless. I'm going to reach for this. This is what I'm reaching for. And also have um, a Yesu behind there. And this is another hard truth. This is where I'm teasing people, right? The bow thing is a neat little radio to beat up. It's very cheap. But... Are you going to be able to program it without any type of manual, without any type of internet resource or friend to help you? Are you going to be able to program the right frequencies in? Because you're going to have to change them. People might be talking on the ones you're on. And another thing is, 
are you going to be able to talk with them? I mean, they're like four to five watts. And some of them advertise eight watts, but uh, in a point-to-point -point communication, because repeaters, we well, can't bet on repeaters, okay? I know a lot of you guys have repeaters programmed in your radios. Uh, as preppers, um, those repeaters might stay on for a few hours, but the, they're not going to stay on forever. The ones that are solar powered are probably going to get stolen from. The solar power is probably going to take get jacked from them or something. Or they're going to get compromised somehow. And there's going to be a whole bunch of people listening to it. So don't rely on repeaters. Point to point communication with these bow things, you might have a mile or two. And that's being real. Like, I'm not talking about the advertised uh, distance on Amazon because that's garbage, right? Like, that's not real life. If you're in the desert, you might get several miles out of them. If you're in the mountains like I am, you might get a mile at, or two at best. Um, and, and that's it. So just be real with the type of technology that you're buying. My third gripe is when you buy these radios and you put them on a shelf, you're not prepping communications. You don't have a plan. You don't have anything except for a radio on a shelf that may or may not work when the time comes. The entire theme of this video is your radio is useless. If you don't have these things, that I'm about to name off again, your radio is useless. If you don't know who you're going to talk to, your radio is useless. If you don't know how you're going to talk to them, your radio is useless. If you don't know how to, you're going to power your radio, your radio is useless. If you don't have a communication plan, your radio is useless. If you don't practice with your radio communicating with a specific individual uh, consistently, your radio is useless. And those are five things that are pretty hard to maintain. Like, all those five things are things that require a lot of thought, they require a lot of planning, they require money, and if you don't check all five of those boxes, you might as well chuck your radio in the trash during a disaster because you're not going to be able to, to talk to the people that you need to talk to. And I know if that, that sounds harsh, and I'm sorry if this video came off kind of crude, but this is kind of a serious, uh, it's kind of a serious thing that I've started asking myself. That's why all of my stuff is now getting consolidated into a mobile box things are starting to become a little bit more functional i'm starting to do things a little bit more intentional and um i'm trying to start thinking if i need to use this thing you know how am i going to use it use you start walking through close your eyes and, and truly imagine a, in a, a scenario where you're going to have to use your emer your radio in an emergency or post-apocalyptic world or wherever it works for you and uh, ask yourself, do you check all five of those boxes? And with that, I next video will be a, bit, a little bit more lighthearted. I just wanted to get my thoughts out there while they're kind of fusing my head. I wanted to make sure that I talked about that with you guys as I had that uh, conversation with myself. Anyways, thanks for watching and 73 to you.